Okay, so in this video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how we debounce a button. And the way we're going to do this is actually by looking at some example code. So you can find this example in your uh, Arduino program by coming down to File, or going File, go to Examples, come down to Digital, and you'll find the code here in Debounce, about the third menu in. And so the reason why I want to look at this particular file is they've done a really good job of documenting this whole process. And so it's very important when you write a piece of code to include your comments, to go through and include uh, basically what's going on in the program. So it helps you learn, but also helps others learn as well. So they give a nice little description at the top here, explaining what it is it does. They tell you what needs to be done in the circuit, which our LED is still on pin 13 and our push button is on pin 2 with our 10k ohm resistor uh, attaching to our button to uh, pull it down. And it continues on, tells you who originally designed it, when it was modified, and who modified it. And it explains that this code is in the public domain, so you can modify this yourself and repost it um, by adding your name to the list there. So anyway, when you go through and look at this, we finally get down to the start of the code on lines 32 and 33. Notice that they are using the constant and integer uh, definitions together. So you're defining this pin, button pin, as a constant integer set equal to two. And you can do the same thing with uh, the LED pin for uh, number 13. What this does is it sets the pin value so that it cannot be changed. That if you would accidentally somewhere um, type uh, button pin equals 6, it won't change it. It'll keep it as 2. So this is a practice you'll see in some uh, programs when you go through and you start analyzing how other people write their programs. Um, it's not a bad habit. It is a, actually a good idea at times. Okay. As we go down, we start looking at some of the other variables. They have three more variables they've added here. They have LED state, track the value of the light, whether it's on or off, to track the value of the button state, and to look at whether or not the button was pressed with this last button state value. They initiate the LED state as high and the last button state as low. And we'll see what they're doing with that here in a minute. We've got a couple more variables that they're going to look at. Uh, the long values here, this allows you to put in larger numbers. And because we're dealing in milliseconds, we're dealing with things that go into the thousands. So we want to make sure that we have a large enough memory slot to handle that. So we're using a long definition when we define these variables. And so the last bounce time is initiated at zero. And the debounce delay, uh, this is 50 milliseconds. And so this is measuring how long it's been since you released the button. So uh, we'll look at a test uh, in their if statements. And we're going to want to remember that this debounce delay was 50 milliseconds. OK, so then we get in the void setup. And we have our normal stuff that we see in void setup, where pin mode is used to set our button pin to an input and our LED pin as an output. But then they also continue and put a digital write command in the setup. And what they're doing is initially turning your, L your LED on. The initial LED state that was initiated above uh, was set to high. So you're going to start out with your light bulb on when you load this sketch. Then we get down into the void loop, so the main body of the program. So the first thing they do is they use a, another variable, a local variable, and they're putting this int reading in this void loop. So that means with it being a local variable, it only works within the void loop statement. What they're going to do here is they're going to actually read the button pin and save that value in this variable called reading. Once they've recorded reading, they're going to take it down here into this if statement. And in this if statement, this says that if reading does not equal 
the button, the last button state. Is that explanation point equal? The explanation point is a not value. So if it does not equal the last button state, reset the timer. So we take last debounce time, or set it equal to the current time, milliseconds. So it's going to take millis where it presently is, and save that value. Millis will run continuously from the time the program is started until you disconnect power. So this value is constantly changing. So it records that value as the last debounce bounce time. And then it takes it down into another if statement. And so what it's going to do is pull up the current millisecond time and subtract it from our saved value in last debounce. If this value, this uh, difference between these two numbers, is greater than our debounce delay, so in other words, if it's greater than 50 milliseconds, it's going to enter into this bracket, into this curly brace, and it's going to uh, do another if statement within this program. So this is an if nested within an if. And so this is saying that if my reading is not equal to the button state, we're going to make the button state and reading the same thing. So take the button state, equal, set it equal to reading. Goes in yet again with another if. So this is nested another level in. Take the button state and set it to high. Take the LED state and this not LED state means take whatever the LED state is over here and switch it. So if this is high, this is going to switch it to low. If this is low, this will switch it to high. And then notice the three sets of curly braces ending. So that's all three if statements. So that's the innermost, the second, and the outer if statements. So this logic structure goes through and it takes and sorts out whether or not the button had been pressed, how long ago it was pressed, and setting the state of the light. Once we have decided what that state should be, and we've exited this if loop structure, we go to digital write, and we're going to say, take our LED pin, and we're going to set it to the LED state. So whatever this LED state was set here at the end is what is going to be written to the LED now. So it's going to either be on or off. Finally, they take the last button state and they're going to set it equal to the reading. So whatever it read last is what it currently is and then this will restart the loop. So this way the light will come on, it'll stay on, it'll wait and it'll check to see whether or not the button had been pressed again. So all of this put together, yes without the comments would be a much shorter program but with the comments, it really kind of lays out and shows you what exactly is going on. So again, when you are trying to create programs, it's important to put in your comments for your own, uh, for your own understanding. But if you're posting this out there uh, in a forum, or if you're posting out your programs on the internet somewhere, or you're trying to help someone, uh, as you can see, this is very important to put in those comments and document everything very closely. Um, so keep that in mind as you're writing your programs. It'll also help you sort things out as well. So try to figure out, try to go back through some of these other examples that are in there as well, and try to decipher what the code actually means. If you have other programs that you've already written, go back in and uh, insert your comments and try to make some uh, better clarifications within your programs, and you'll find that it's very helpful in understanding your structure. So, again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.